Hello class. In this lesson uh, on topic 2.7, composition of functions, you will learn how to evaluate a composition function and create a new function using this operation called composition. Before we do that, let's review evaluating functions. So let's consider the function f of x is equal to 2x minus 3, and let's evaluate the following. Let's start with f of 5. To evaluate f of 5, that is simply going to require us to replace the x value with 5 and then simplifying by following our order operation. So this would end up becoming 10 minus 3 which is 7. Now to evaluate f of x with f of c that again just requires us to replace our x this time only with c minus 3 which simplifies to 2c minus 3. So that is your solution. Okay, so the key thing again is to replace our x with whatever that value is inside our parentheses of f of our value, or in this case f of c. So if I want to evaluate f of 4a, since f of x is 2x uh, minus 3, I would do 2, replace the x with 4a minus 3, and then simplify the expression from here, which is going to equal to 8a minus 3. And if I do a little bit something more complicated even with the same variable here, I want to evaluate f of 5x minus 1. That will require, again, replacing the x with 5x minus 1 and simplifying the expression. This one requires distribution, so we end up with 10x minus 2 minus 3 which is a total of 10x minus 5. Now I can factor this because they do have a common factor of 5 and just so it could look a little prettier, I can factor out the 5 and I end up with this value. But again, these two, these two values are equivalent. But I'm going to write the factor form, okay? You don't have to, but I just noticed that they had a common factor of x. Okay? Now, what we're going to be learning today, what we reviewed right there, especially this last examples right here, these last examples that we were doing right here, this one and this one, or even this one up here, these are all examples of composition functions. Sometimes in mathematics, we need to plug in a value for x into a function and then use that output value to plug it into another function. For example, let's say that you're shopping for Mr. Aviles because you want to buy him a gift for a teacher appreciation week, right? Because of the am amazing job I've been doing this year. Now, you have a coupon for a $5 off. That's going to take $5 off all the items at the store, at the teacher store, to, at the math teacher store, because that's what I want. And the store is taking also $10 off all purchases at the register, okay? So they're automatically going to take that uh, $10 off. So let's say that you really appreciate Mr. Aviles and uh, for the job that I've done this year and you find him a gift that is worth $29. Finding the price of the item with the two discounts is an example of a composition function because of the following. All right, so we're going to come up with the two compositions. The first, uh, the first function, okay? Let's say that the first function with your coupon so C of X, C for coupon, is going to equal to 5% off the whole item. So that's 100% minus 5%. That's going to be multiplied again with the price of the item. So let's say P. Let's use the letter P for price, P. So the price of the item. Well, this simplifies to a total of 95%. times p, which is 0.95p. So c of p with your coupon will be 95p. So if the item is $29, you're only paying 20, 95% of that 29. So p, again, is going to be the price of the item, so 29. So let's evaluate this. Let's evaluate c of 29 which is going to be 0.95 times 29. All right, let's here, let's bring out our calculator here. And we're going to multiply 0.95 
let me clear this, 0 0.95 times 29. And that's going to equal to a total of $27.55. Okay. Now, the store is also giving you a discount. So we'll create a function for that, D of T, which is going to be, and we'll call it R because they're going to take away $10 at the register. So whatever your price is, Okay, whatever the price of the item is, they're going to take away $10 off. Okay, so we're now going to use this value here and plug it in here. So this is the price that's going to be at the register. So we have a price of $27.55. Minus the $10 that the store is going to take out at the register and you end up paying $17.55. And this right here, finding this price, again, is an example of a composition function because we had to do one thing to our price, and then that answer was then going to be subtracted by 10 to give us our total value right there, okay? And of course, this would be different if you uh, the item that you're purchasing is gonna be a different price, but this is an example of a composition function again applied in the real world so let's now look at some things that we're going to be doing again analytically a little more abstract here and how we uh, the, the operation and all that so the composition function is expressed by using this notation is defined by the following that f of g of x okay this is the notation this is the operator that tells us that we're doing a composition. It's an open circle right in between. So it's not like a dot, like multiplication, but an open dot uh, in the same style. So we have f of g of x, and what that means is that we're doing a composition by plugging in one function into the other. So here, our g function, we're gonna plug in the value of x into g, that's gonna give us an answer, and then that answer gets plugged into the equation of f. And the way that we read this, we read this as f of g of x. Both of them, okay? Both of them are read the exact same way. Okay, so this one and this one are read the exact same way. Now, when evaluating composition functions, we always start with the inside, okay? The inside part, which is the right one, and uh, so, for example, if we have this, f of g of x, or this one, again, f of g of x, we start by evaluating g of x first. Then we use that answer from g of x and substitute it into the left or the outside, f of x. So for example, let's look at this example right here. Here we want to evaluate f of g of 3. So we're going to start by first substituting in the number 3 into the function g. So we start by doing that. So we get g of 3, which is going to be 2 times 3 plus 1. And that's going to be a total of 6 plus 1. which is seven. We're now going to get that seven and plug that answer into Sorry. F. We're gonna plug that answer into F. And since F is three times X minus five, that would be three times seven minus five. So three times seven, that's equal to 21 minus five that's equal to a total of 16. So this right here would be our answer. F of G of three equals 16. Now, because compositions, again, are rel relying on two different functions, you'll notice that when we do this backwards and we do G of F of three, we are not gonna end up with the exact same answer, okay? Now and then we will, because of the numbers, they just work out that way. 
but unless these functions are inverses of each other, the compositions should always be different and not the same um, if we invert it. So let me write a little note here that f of g of x does not equal to g of f of x. So that means again that these are not commutative, all right? They're not going to be commutative, all right? So they're not equal to each other. So uh, again, in uh, considering that they're not inverses of each other. So we should not get the exact same thing. So for our next example, let's see, for this example, we should end up with, again, with a different value. So this right here means that we start, again, we we'll start from the inside out, or for in this case, the out, and we're gonna plug in three into the F. So we're gonna evaluate F of three. Using, again, the same equation from above, F is three X minus five, so those would be three times three minus five, which is nine minus five, which is four. Okay, so now we're going to evaluate G with four. And since G is two X plus one, that's two times four plus one, which is eight plus one, and that's equal, that equals nine. And you see the two answers are different. So again, um, composition is not commutative. Getting the F of G of three is not the same thing as g of f of three. And the last example that I have is plugging in the number four into the function f and then into f again. So here we're gonna start by plugging in four into f, and f again is three times x minus five, so here this will be three times four minus five, which is 12 minus five, and that is a total of seven. And then that answer gets plugged into F again, which is three times seven minus five. And we already did that up here. We already know that F of seven is 16. And since we're using the same function, f of seven is still gonna be equal to 16. So this one is also equal to 16, okay? So there, there you have it. Now, what we can also do, instead of just evaluating functions, what we can do is create a new function using this composition. So like in this example right here, I wanna do the composition of f of g of x, since f is 3x minus 5, we're going to use the same thing as above, and g is 2x plus 1. What we want to do in this example is that we want to plug this, let me get my highlighter here, we want to plug this into f. So we want to get the equation of g and plug that into the x of f. So we're going to do this substitution right there. So this is going to equal to 3x minus 5. And we're replacing, again, the g with 2x plus 1. And that's what's going to go into the function f. The 2x plus 1 is going to go into this x right here for f. So plugging it in, 2x plus 1. And look at that. That looks exactly like one of the examples that we did, again, when reviewing function evaluation. This is going to require us to simply use distribution, and we end up with 6x plus 3 minus 5, and we can now evaluate this and simplify it. So we end up with minus 2. So this here is the composition of f of g. Now let's do it backwards. Again, since composition is not commutative, g of f of x should equal to something different. So here, I wanna figure out what g is gonna equal to when we substitute in the f function, which is three x minus five in for it. So let me put an equal sign. We're gonna write two 
put parentheses where the x is plus 1. Again, we're using this function, 2x plus 1, and we're replacing the x with f. And f is 3x minus 5. So 3x minus 5. We're now going to distribute, and this is 6x minus 10 plus 1. And simplifying this is going to give us a total of negative 9. And there you have it. Now let's move on to the next example, to the next page. And on this page, we're going to let H, K, P, and M be represented from above here. And we want to evaluate this. So let's practice some more examples of evaluating, again, our function using these functions now. So for this example right here, again, we want to start by first plugging in the number 2 into H. Okay? So we want to figure out what does H of 2 equal. Well, since h is 2x minus 3, that would be 2 times 2 minus 3, which is going to equal to a total of 1. We then plug in that 1 into k. So this is now k of 1. So this is our second step. Now to figure out what k of 1 equals. So looking up there, the function of k is x squared plus 4x plus 5. So we're going to plug in 1 into this equation. So that's 1 to the second power plus 4 times 1 plus 5. And that's going to equal to a total of 1 plus 4 plus 5, which adds all up. Let me erase the equal sign right here, which adds up to a total of 10. So this is our answer. Our answer is 10. So for this example, we're using two different functions, h of m of negative 1, which again is simply doing this. So again, we always want to start with the inside first, which is the right, and we want to plug in 1, negative 1 into m. So let's look up here and let's see what m is. m is the equation 3x plus 2. So 3 times negative 1 plus 2. Let me double check. Yeah, 3x plus 2. And that will end up equaling to negative 3 plus 2. That's negative 1. So now our second step is now, since we know what m of negative 1 is, we now know that m of negative 1 is negative 1. We now plug in that negative 1 into h. And let me go up here again. h is 2x minus 3. So 2 times x, which is going to be negative 1 plus 3. That ends up equaling to positive 1. So our answer is positive 1. And then for our third example, we will evaluate k of p of x. Notice that this one doesn't have a number, okay? This one doesn't have a number. We just want to create a new function as a result. So let me first write what k of x is. k of x, so I don't have to keep going back and forth. k is x squared plus, plus 4x plus 5. And p of x is the square root of 3x plus 1. So this notation right here means that we want to do this operation. We want to substitute in p into the function k. So we want to get the, this equation here and plug it into the x's of k. That's what that notation up here means, okay? So we'll start by writing again. In this situation, we're going from the inside to the out. So we have to plug this into k. So k is equal to this. So that means we're going to replace the x's with the square root of 3x plus 1. That's to the second power. That's this first term right there. 
well you know what let me do it underneath so it could be aligned and let me move this out of the way so let me move this over here okay zoom out a little bit and let me erase this and let me put it underneath okay so we're gonna write x we're gonna replace the x with the square root of 3x plus 1 again this is what we're doing remember p of x is equal to that so all I've done is replace p of x with 3x plus 1 and that's the substitution I'm gonna plug in for k that's going to be raised to the second power. We're going to add 4 and the value of x, which again is the square root of 3x plus 1. And we're going to add 5. Well, the square root and square are opposites of each other. I'm sorry, uh, inverses of each other. So they're going to cancel each other out. So we're going to end up with that. This cannot be distributed or simplified any further. So that stays like this. And we have 5. So we're going to add like terms which is just 6, the 1 and the 5, and then just add the 4 radical 3x plus 1. So that is going to be our composition. Now, we can also remember functions can be represented by various forms, okay? Not just by the equations themselves, but we could also represent a function using a graph, a table of values, or a ver uh, a verbal description, okay? So let's use again the various forms and notice that we have again the graph of k is given above with a table of selected values of the function g uh, and uh, the function g in equation of the piecewise function and I'm missing print commas here, okay? An equation of the piecewise function h and a verbal description of the function k. Let's use this information to evaluate the following, again, if possible. So, let me highlight where these functions are. So we have f up here, that's the graph of f. We have g in blue, h in red, and k is going to be this one in green. Let's write the equation of k since we have the verbal description, so let's write the equation. So it says here that k of x is a quadratic equation, so that's going to be x to the second power, with a horizontal translation of 2, excuse me, and a horizontal translation of 2, and a vertical translation of negative 3. So our x squared will be x minus 2 to the second power, and then minus 3, plus negative 3, so minus 3. So that's the equation for k. And now that we have the equation for k, let's um, do some of these examples, okay? So for example, number five, we're using again these five different functions, I'm sorry, four different functions, f, g, h, and k, and we wanna evaluate the following. So we're gonna start by evaluating g, f of g of three. So we begin by first on the inside. So we're gonna first have to figure out what g of three equals. So let's look for the function g, which is again the table. And our x value is three. So on this example, since we look at the table, let me go over here, our x value is three. And if we look at the table, we notice that we are not provided the input value of three. Now we do not know enough information to come up with an equation for this thing. So since we cannot identify what g of three equals, so since this is undefined, we're not told again what g of three is, nor a way of determining what g of three is this is undefined, then that means the composition is also undefined. So let's move on to the next one. For example, B, we want to evaluate H of F of 8. So we start with F of 8. So we're going to figure out what F of 8 is first. So let's look for the function f, which is this graph right here. 
we're looking for when the x value is 8, so 8 is here, and we look for the corresponding y value. So the y value is negative 1. So h of f, I'm sorry, f of 8 equals negative 1. So now we're going to use the composition and use this answer and plug it into h. So h of negative 1. So we now we have to go to graph h or function h, which is represented by the piecewise function right here. Okay, and we have three pieces. We plug in either the x into this x up here in the top piece or at the bottom piece or the answer is going to be negative 4. Well, it equals to negative 4 if the value of x is 1. Well, our input value is not positive 1, it's negative 1. So that one cannot be it. And since negative 1 is less than 1, we're going to plug it into the top piece right there. So we're going to evaluate the absolute value of negative 7 plus 3 times negative 1. This is equal to the absolute value of negative 7 plus negative 3, which equals the absolute value of negative 10. And the absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10. So that means that the composition of h of f of 8 ultimately equals 10. So that is our answer. So for now, for example, C, we want to evaluate G of K of 0. So we start with first figuring out what K of 0 equals. So K of 0, let's find K. Okay, that's this equation here. We're going to plug in 0 in for the x. So that is 0 minus 2 to the second power minus 3. So negative 2 to the second power minus 3. Negative 2 to the second power is positive 4 minus 3. And that equals 1. So now that we know that k of 0 equals 1, we can now evaluate g at 1. And g is our table up here. And we're going to come across the same problem as before. Our table g, we know the value of negative 1. Let me just double check that I'm not supposed to get negative 1. Nope, so we'll still be positive 1 because negative 2 to the second power is going to become positive 4, and positive 4 minus 3 is in fact positive 1. And positive 1 is not on the table up there, okay? So this one has no value. So this e is undefined. So that means that the composition of g of k of 0 is also undefined. Now in example d, we're going to plug in 2 into f and then plug that answer into f again. So first let's evaluate f of 2, the inside part first. So let's come up here and let's look for the function f. Function f again is our graph. And we're looking for when x is positive 2. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly where it's broken up. And of the two circles, the one that's going to count is the closed circle. So f of 2 is 1. So this equals 1. So now we're going to evaluate f again but this time at 1. So let's go back up to our graph. Look at where x equals 1, which is right here, and the y value is 4. So that means that f of f of 2 equals 4.
And finally, for our last two examples, okay? So for example, E, let's evaluate H of two. H, again, is the piecewise function. And since two, since X is equaling to two and two is greater than one, that means we're gonna evaluate two with that expression right there with this piece, negative X. So this is going to be negative x. Remember, it's the same thing as negative 1 times x. So negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. We now evaluate g at negative 2. And g is our table. So let's move all the way up to our table. I think I'm did a typo here. I think I meant to write negative 2 on this one. Yep, let's change this to a negative 2 because then this will be a positive 2. Oh no, that's not in the change things. No, never mind. No, no, no. It is supposed to be like that. Okay, so this will be negative of 2, which is negative 2. And my table again is not defined at 2. We do not know what the y value is, uh, the y value x at negative two because x is not given to us at two. We have x of negative four, of negative one, of two, five, and seven. So this one is also undefined. And then finally the last one. The last one is a composition of all of them starting again from the left to the right. So here we would start off with k, k of three. K is our quadratic equation where it's x minus 0. So again, it's going to be this one right here. So x minus 0. So 3 minus 2, I'm sorry, to the second power minus 3. So I replace my x, again, this x with the 3, and I'm going to simplify this. So this is going to be... 3 minus uh, 2 is 1, and 1 to the second power is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So now we're going to move to h and evaluate h at negative 2. So let's look up here. Okay. Negative 2 is smaller than 1, so we're going to use, again, the top piece, the absolute value piece. So this is equal to the absolute value of negative 7 plus 3 times the x value of negative 2, which is the absolute value of negative 7 plus negative 6, which is negative 13. Which is positive 13. Now we're going to evaluate f at 13. And if we look at the graph, the graph doesn't go beyond 10. So this is also going to be undefined. So we did all of that just to get an, a value that's undefined. Okay. Let's see. Let's do one more example since we had, again, four of these things be undefined. And let's do another example of E. And let's switch the input value. So let's switch this and let's say that we're going to now evaluate, instead of this, let's evaluate g of h. And let's say the input value is going to be 1, okay? So let's put 1. So let's evaluate h at 1. And looking at our function h, when h is equal to 1, all right, I'm sorry, when x is equal to 1, that means that the h value of 1 is negative 4. So that's going to be that piece right there. So h of 1 equals to the value of negative 4. We're now going to use that output value as the input for g. So now we're going to evaluate g at negative 4. And let's go up here. And this one we can actually evaluate now because g 
of negative 4 means x is negative 4, the y value is pi. So g of negative 4 equals pi. So that means that g of h of positive 1 equals to the value pi. And there's your answer. Okay. Well, there concludes again our examples for this. On Monday, you'll have an activity and then you'll do this assignment, assignment number 21, composition of functions um, during class. If you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me. Again, email me uh, with any of your questions. And I hope you have a great day. And again, like always, I appreciate you watching. Goodbye.